Hey everybody, <clears throat> excuse me. The purpose of this video is to reinforce the notion that the sum of the deviations uh, from average of any data set always, uh, always are zero. So what I've got here in Excel in this first sheet is 1,000 uniformly distributed data points uh, between one and a thousand. I use the command rand between one comma one thousand to generate one thousand of them. And if you don't believe me, of course you can scroll down and take a look. It's a little nausea inducing, but they're all there. Over here I have a histogram of the data and I've got it set up dynamically so we can we can reload it with the push of an F9 button. And that yellow bar that's kind of sticking up there, it's not, it's not really a bar, it's actually just a data point. It's the average. The average of these points is about about 500, which you would expect it to be. If you're randomly generating numbers between 1 and 1,000, you would expect the average to be right in the middle. And that's pretty much where it is all the time, is right in the middle between 1 and 1,000. Okay, so histogram looks fairly flat, as you might hope it would be. Average is right in the middle. The interesting thing, though, is in each of these cells over here, what I've done is I've taken the data point to the left, and subtracted the average, which is over here in cell F4. Each one of these data points is the deviation. So this one right here, 901, is 384 uh, above the average of 517. So 517 plus 384 gets you 901. 517 plus 70 gets you 587. 516, or 517 minus 250 gets you 267 and so forth and so on. A negative variance uh, means that it's below average, a positive means that it's above. But this, this right here, is the true number I want to focus on. Now that's a horrendous looking number, but it's scientific notation. It's negative point oh 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 five. <laughs> now it's basically the same thing except six. Now it's the same thing except two, same thing except nine. Same thing except, what is that, one. So what you're seeing is Excel trying very hard to say the number zero, but it can't. And this is a limitation you might remember from your, your TIs back in the day when you took Math 95. They very often had a hard time saying zero as well. They would often give you this scientific notation with, you know, a point and then ten zeros and an eight or something like that. Well, all that is, the reason that is, is because they're doing a numerical calculation that's based on a certain level of precision. And it just hasn't got enough precision to say zero. Every once in a blue moon, if you run this, oh, there was one right there. Every once in a blue moon, you'll actually see zeros fill in. Because that means that it's actually, there's enough zeros. Oh, there was one back there, there was one right there. I'm going too quickly. But the point of the fact is, is that number, this number right here, essentially is zero. And it doesn't matter what data set we have. The average dances around the center, and that's, oh, there's one right there, zero. Now I also, this is uniform data. I decided to hopefully verify it for you guys for other data sets as well. This is a normal distribution, a bell curve distribution that has an average of about 500 and a plus or minus of about 250. So every time I press F9, you'll see some reshuffling of data. Again, the average is hovering right around 500, as it should, because that's right in the middle of the bell curve. But once again, the sum of the deviations is zeroing out. Isn't that cool? The sum of the deviations from average is always zero. And last but not least, I decided to put a truly awesomely confusing <laughs> um, data set up here for you. Oh, I don't need that guy. That's just checking the maximum value. This is the exponential distribution, which is a highly skewed one. So you can see the average is way over here. Um, you would think the, the median and the mode are right in this bar, and they are. But the average gets pulled to the right because of the presence, if you look over here, of the outliers that inevitably pop up in the exponential distribution. But even though it's highly skewed, look at the sum of the deviations from average. Still zero. Still zero. Pretty cool, huh? So remember, there's an extra credit point opportunity for anybody that can verify why the sum of the deviations from average is zero. And look for it in the variability homework. Hope this helped.